Yo, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Another episode, of True Beast Podcast, Muscle Bully, episode sixteen. For those of y'all that's just tuning in, man, make sure you hit the question mark at the bottom of the box. Put your questions in there; it makes it easier for us to find them questions when it's time. And you already know we're gonna get this thing kicked off. Let's see, boom. We got one. We got our guest coming in. Except. Yes, sir. What's going on? What's going on? What's up? What's up? Get everybody else up in here. We'll get Stan and Roger in here. We'll get the rocking and rolling, man. How you doing today? Good, good, good. How about yourself? I can't complain, man. I'm blessed. I woke up, so I ain't tripping. That's what's up. Yeah, Yeah, man. For everybody that's tuning in for the first time, like I said, make sure you hit the question mark at the bottom of the screen so you can uh, enter your questions in there, and we'll be able to see them a lot faster. When we get Stan in here, he'll break down the giveaways. There goes Mr. Roger. What's up? What's going on, Roger? What's up, buddy? Ugh. And here comes Stan. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. You can yes. hear me? Yep. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, finally. <laughs> I use this, uh, I got this new uh, mic, so Uh-oh. I'll make sure it was working. How's All everybody right. doing, man? What's up, Carl, man? What's, what's going on, Stan? Yes, sir. That's a very special time. logo behind you. What's that logo yeah. about? Um, it's pulling mascots. It's the camp. Um, yeah. How long have you been that, a part of that? Uh, what? Two years now? Gotcha. Two years, yeah. All right, so for those who are tuning in um, for the first time, this is the True Beast Podcast. This is what we call <clears> our <throat> Muscle Bully Episode Edition where it's more geared towards the bully community. We want to bring in high value, who we believe are high valued individuals who can bring massive value to the community. And if you're new to the community, um, you can learn a lot from this. And so that's our whole thing here at True Beast um, and Next Dog is that we want to bring a lot of value. And um, if you don't listen to us live here, you can always catch us on um, YouTube and um, Apple, Spotify, and everywhere else. Um, if, you, if you unfortunately can't tune in here. Now, if you can, fortunately tune in here um we also do a giveaway towards the end of the show the show is about an hour long um and as long as you're listening live um we do a giveaways for true beast products muscle bully products x dog products and and more and it's just a random spinner wheel and i'll go ahead and and um try to pin the, the pin the question on how to enter all you gotta do is just say add me i'm listening and tuning in now you have three minutes once we spin the wheel you have three minutes to reply if you don't respond we're gonna we're just gonna skip you and and, and give uh give the gift to a, uh, another opportunity for for somebody else to win but other than that man we got carl on here man so i'm gonna go ahead and let the boys take over i know uh roger has a lot of questions i know zach has a lot of questions as well um they were arguing a lot this um, this, 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 this right. Why is it, why is it trying to tell? So, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let them go. I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and say why. Uh, was it arguing? Know, it was. Not, a I'm not saying healthy. Undebatable you know, situation. Like, we can have healthy relationships. Here, you know? Spirited discussion. There you Spirited go. discussions. I like that. There, there you go. go. Um. So let's start, man. How long? Uh. As always, how long you been messing with the bullies? What made you get into them? And and then we'll get the rolling from there. Oh, man, I've always been to the bullies um, ever since I was younger. Uh, but I could never have one because my dad always thought that they were bad luck. Well, not so much more bad luck. It's just he felt that when they passed away, someone in the family was going to pass away. So we could never have one. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. That, that, that's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's, Is that uh, like culture driven? Uh, for the most part, yeah, because he was a cop back in the Philippines. And, uh, okay. The day okay. he got shot, he was like shot like an inch from his heart. Yeah. My mom and dad, they had a parrot. That same night it died. Wow. He lived. So ever since then, it was like so my like pet rule. My wife is Filipino, so I completely understand on the superstitions and stuff because my mother-in-law be having, there's so much stuff you can yeah. and can't do. And I'm like, what? Like, hold on. Yeah. Like, nope, can't do that. Can't do that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, but um, officially, what? Five years, going on five years. Um, show scene, it's been going on three years now. Um, but overall, you know, I've, I've always been into it ever since I was younger. Um, old school Razor's Edge, Gotti Line, things like that, you know. The originators of the bully. 
Um, but it wasn't up until like five years ago where I actually started investing myself into it. Nice. Got you. What was the, uh, what was like the first dog you put in the show ring, baby KC? Uh, the first dog I put in was actually my, uh, my dual champ Gucci, Shark Tank Bullies Gucci. Um, that was originally the, my camp, mine and my wife's camp, um, before we, uh, joined up with Bully Mascots. But, uh, yeah, the first show dog I had that ever stepped into the ring that got me into showing is, uh, Gucci. Gucci. He was a dual champion and champion in BRC and the champion in ABKC. Right now, um, as far as all your current vision and your productions, what would you feel is your, uh, your best production in history. You've been in this for a long time. What what dog is your uh, your most proud closest thing to your vision? Um, oh, that's a toss up. Um, I would have to say it's uh, Grand Champion Champion Earl um, because he's he's very well put together. I mean, in Jacksonville, he uh, he dominated the pocket mail one to two class. Um, taking a best of winners under uh, international judge regime. Um, okay. And he just dominated. He walked away a champion that day. And that was his debut in ABKC. Nice. Yeah, I've not got to see him yet. I don't know. Oh. Like yeah. Seen Pilo, but I'm not got to see him yet. Um, you'll be up here for nationals, right? BRC nationals? I unfortunately am not going to make it to nationals. Uh, what? Man. I got puppies on the ground. I'm going to have. Yeah, precious puppies on the ground, so That's I'm not going to make it. Well, puppies on the ground. Soon enough, soon enough, you'll get to see him and Hunter. I will, um, for sure. Yeah. And you got another little one there. Um, what's that baby Yoda? Name? Yeah, Baby Yoda. Yeah, Baby Yoda. He's, uh, yeah. he's laying down right front. Yeah, Baby Yoda. He's uh, probably my next best um, as far as in-house just because he represents his dad so much. Right. Sorry. All the, right, uh, so let's go. Is he a micro pocket? Yeah, he's, he a, he's, he's a micro. He's a That's micro. what I figured. He's a micro. Yeah. Yep. Um, so you said you had your own kennel, and then you joined up with Bully Mascot. So what was that like, and what made you make that decision to actually team up with Corey like that? Well, so I was – my wife and I, or my fiancé and I, we started Shark Tank Bullies um, officially – when we moved here to Michigan, because her family's originally from here. I'm originally from the West Coast. So, yeah, got you. Uh, when we uh, moved out here, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start a kennel and try to get it going. Um, she's like, all right. So it was Shark Tank Bullies. My hometown is San Jose, California. So, you know, we had the Shark Tank there for the San Jose Sharks. Gotcha. Um, yeah. That's what started it. And about probably when I purchased Pilo, when I, I hooked up with Corey when I purchased Pilo. Um, originally, I had contacted him about a dog from his Rocco litter where Barkley's off of, um, but everything was sold off of that. But he was like, I do have this one dog from a Rocco grandson. Um, and he sent me a video and some pictures like, you know what, you know, I'll, I'll grab him. I'll take a chance. And then from there, our relationship developed. I picked up uh, another female from him, Jean Gray. And also that's when uh, Boogie's litter uh, came about and I also grabbed Boogie. Soon after that, he had asked me if I wanted to, you know, join up with Bully Mascots. At first, I told him, you know what, I'm going I'm to chill and work on my thing. Um, but my online promotional skills weren't there. I'm more of an in person um, yeah. promotion guy. That's why I'm, I just thought, you know what, if I'm going to be at shows, this is my way of promoting not only the camp, but myself and my dogs, you know. Um, <laughs> But Corey taught me a lot about online promotion. And then a couple months after the first offer, I reached out to him and I was like, you know what, is that spot still open? He's like, I've been waiting for you. And that's that. Yeah. Do you feel like uh, it, it works out because you both bring different strengths to the, you know, to the relationship? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, like Corey was mentioning last week um, on his podcast with you guys, uh, his strength is really online, you know? And yeah. I get the yeah. question all the time whenever I'm at shows, oh, when's Corey going to come out? When's Corey going to come out? I'm like, he'll come out when he'll come out. But, you know, <laughs> I'm here. I'm representing the camp while he's doing his thing online. His, his strength has always been 
online. Not to say he, when, he, when he does finally come out, you know, it's going to be just the energy, you know, at the booth. It's going to be strong because both of us will be there. And then, obviously, we got the other two members down in Virginia, Melvin and uh, uh, Dante. Melvin, we always hit up uh, the Jacksonville ABKC show every year. So you'll always catch both of us there. Um, Dante, I was supposed to go to a show and he, I finally meet him at a show so he could see, uh, you know, what the boys can do in the ring. But something ended up coming up. So I wasn't, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it to that one. But hooking up with Corey, probably the best thing I did. Just because through him, I started to become known. And then once I started going out on my own, the brand was there with me. Yeah. Everybody knew me as, oh, yeah, there's Bully Mascots Carl. There's Bully Mascots Carl. Now yeah. it's more like, oh, there's Carl. He's part of Bully Mascot. You know, so yeah. eventually my entity separated from being Bully Mascots Carl. Right. So. No, I mean, from a business standpoint, it makes sense. Like you said, that was your weak point. You knew you, knew you weren't as good as marketing. So he already had a big name or whatnot, marketing good online. Because like you said last last episode, like, he said, man, that's just what I do. I'm good at it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'd rather sit at the house and promote and mess with the dogs than step out and go to a show. So oh, yeah. Yeah. that's why I wanted to ask, because it makes a lot of sense now that y'all break it down. And, and, and as a team, it works, man. Like you yeah, said, you does. got somebody that can go in the field and represent and, and show face and network with different people. And then he's able to sit back and critique what he's got to do to get it worldwide. It's, it's oh, yeah. dope. Definitely. So a little deeper question, I guess, than normal, but I know that you, beyond just bullies or, you know, having bullies and showing bullies, but you do a lot of your own reproductive work, you know, collecting your studs, processing semen, doing your own breedings. Like, how, how critical do you find that to be a successful program for, you know, a breeder to learn those aspects? Oh, it's very critical. I suggest, you know, I suggest everybody to at least – research as much as you can on it because it's vital the num progesterone testing is vital especially nowadays because it's sad to say but the bully the bullies themselves they're so fucked up excuse my language but they're so fucked up like you got females going into split heats for months on end silent heats you know all this and that um it's 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 critical to know your females numbers and from there like you get a good sense, okay, my female came in on this time. If I count this much, she'll probably be coming in then. And you don't have to spend all the money on getting the test done because tests nowadays can be expensive. Um, you can kind of guess, okay, I'll wait. Boom, I'll, hit, I'll get her tested here after this, so many days. Um, I've had a lot of clients here where they've, they've had problems with their females, not taking and uh, this and that. How frustrating is it, you know, as you're running your brand and business uh, to deal with um, individuals, you know, s requesting stud services and them not knowing the numbers and then, you know, almost in a way like holding you accountable? <laughs> um, it's funny you say that because when I first started doing this, people were blaming me, but I told them, hey, look. I'm not your female. You're not your female. You don't know what your female is doing. You know, you guess, you guess, and you say, you know what, let me use you. And I drew the blood, I spun it down, and I put it in the machine and got you your numbers. Well, you were either late or you were late, period, you know? <laughs> um, so I, I started telling people, especially like new clients as they come to me, um, that, uh, look, I'm only here testing your female like the vet would. You're here because I'm cheaper than the vet and you get your results the same day. That's why you came to me. That's why you heard of me. Mm. And that's why you're here. Yeah. And they understand that. And you know what? Whether they choose to wait um, or go, the time that they are here while I'm drawing the blood, I'll explain to them, you know, um, what's going to go on, what's going to happen. I'll ask them how long has your female been in. Um, and from there, you know, I can take a good guess of where she'll be at and, I'm happy to say that 98% of the time, I'm right. You know, um, as far as the semen analysis, um, I've helped a lot of studs here revitalize themselves um, because when they came to me, their count was low and now they're having litters. Um, it's also good for me personally because 
I get to evaluate my studs as I please. Well, let's go without... deeper into that. Let's talk about that. How, yeah, yeah, your... because that, that's a, that, I think Zach's going to segue into what I'm going to say. How are you revitalizing them? Is that what you're going to ask that? Because that's an important <laughs> thing. Yeah, right? no, it like, really is. Like, we've talked about it before, the fact that, like, with age or with the wrong diet or the wrong nutrition yeah. that's getting in or, or just no conditioning at all, yeah. does it play a part with their mobility? Like, oh, yeah. I mean, as, as a male, as a human, you know, it's like a 65-year-old man that doesn't do shit and just lays yeah. around, he's probably going to need Viagra. But a man that's working out, cutting the grass every day, he's more likely to have more testosterone, which therefore he still produces more semen. So it's got to be the same with the dogs, is it what is. me and Stan talk about. No, it is. Um, there was one stud two years old and he was having serious issues like damn near nothing blanks yeah. and i told him you know what what does he do all day he's like oh he just sits around you know you got to work him work him um i told him to feed him some salmon or get him some salmon oil um get him a better diet you know this mm -hmm. and that just whatever helps us can be implemented into the dogs you know, yeah. to a certain to a certain aspect of dosage, it. yeah, yeah, to exactly. it, yeah. And uh, I was like, "Come back to me within two months, and we'll see where he's at." He came back two months later. He was in the billions. He did a breeding that same day. He had litter, you know, ninety days or sixty days later, sixty-two days later. Yeah. And uh, ever since then, all his dogs get that same treatment. So, um, that's what I do here. Um, I mean, you got, if, you, if you have working studs, you got to keep them in right. tip-top shape, you know. Um, you have to, because it's just like us. If we sit around on the couch all day, if we don't use it, well, we lose it, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm talking about, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, diet, he said not yet. That, Ain't got that. Supported, supported. <laughs> so, um, beyond... Because there's two things. I've talked to you a couple times about yes. uh, a few items. One, you hear people complain about having to do PG test if a PG test or a PG test. It, it seems like they don't realize how critical that is to find that moment of ovulation. You know what I mean? So they complain because she was a 0.2, now she's a, a 1, now i got to take yeah. her back and pay again. And You know how critical that point of ovulation is for your success. Yeah, yeah. Um As a stud owner, I always tell them whenever I send over the contract, go over that part that's in bold and underlined. You have to PG test because I'm not playing a guessing game and I'm not here to waste your money. Right. You know, you're, you're paying, you know, anywhere upwards of 10000 on the low side for a stud and nowadays. Um, do you really want to miss your shot? You know? Exactly. So, get that test get the test like it's 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 vital to get the test because right. then at the end of the day say said uh female owner doesn't get the test and said stud owners you know agrees okay you know here good luck doesn't take who's the blame right. you're gonna blame the stud owner oh no your dog's not you know no he's not good blah, blah, this and that sperm's no good no you didn't get the progesterone test yeah. so, so get what well, you know I found it very interesting when you're like, hey, salmon, omega-3, I mean, uh, uh, fish oil. And, and both of them are loaded with omega-3, vitamin D, which yeah. on, the, on the human side, that's a big, that's a pivotal nutrient for us, mm -hmm. right? And I always try to tell people, like, the most natural way to increase your stud's mobility is, one, feed them, feed them a clean diet if you can possibly clean. So the cleaner yeah. the diet, the better. That means, like, single ingredient it animal meats, organs, and uh, any other kind of, you know, supplements that you can add, add to their diet. Because right now, when you talk about supplements, you know, 10 years ago, they're kind of like, oh, frowned upon in the bully community. Oh, it's like steroids. Yeah. Now people are getting an understanding that our, our soil is so farm that supplements are important supplement means more than just muscle builder now yeah. supplement means supplementing nutrients like zinc and um, magnesium and all these other uh, you know these these key minerals that are, are vital to our dogs overall health and then another natural ways to exercise like I know the when we talk about humans like 
getting in the gym, getting that blood flow, you know, pushing up heavy weight and stuff like that is, is one of the best ways to increase your t testosterone levels. But with our dogs, especially bullies, we look at bullies as companion animals, you know, yeah. like they're just chill. And I like that. But at the same time, if I want to increase my dog's mobility, I got to be consciously aware of what I'm feeding him. And I got to be mm -hmm. consciously aware of the lifestyle. So, you know, I, I always, like I did a, a you, probably Roger and Zach, you've seen posts this week too, where I was like, or last week where I was like, forcing your dog not to work out is the problem. You know, yeah. most people don't force their dogs to work out. Yeah, yeah. They need it. And, and they need it for the longevity of their life. It's going to yeah. slow down the aging process of their living cells. It's going to help them live longer. It's going to reduce the risk of health related diseases. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think it's just something that's under talked about in, especially in this community, because 20 years ago, so I, I kind of, you know, get, hooks me up with bravado. I get bravado. I'm, I'm thinking like, okay, I'm going to take him to, you know, we got a breeding. I'm going to take him up to the veterinarian. I'm going to pull some frozen semen. I'm going to share some frozen semen. Oh, no, 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 no. That means, that, that, that's decades ago, Stan. Uh, you're going to have to get the glove out now. Yeah. You're going to have to find something to get the glove out. And it yeah. needs to be instant, you know. And I was like, damn, the game doesn't change. It just, yeah. nothing didn't change. It evolved, you know. And right. yeah, we talked about it. That's the that's the pros and cons you, the, yeah. the look that we're trying to get the cons is is that we may lack certain you know semen mobility yeah, it's, it's, uh, um, keep your studs healthy. yeah especially like you said i mean it, we're companion breed but it, uh, like carl said if you're offering a stud service if that stud is supposed to be a working you know stud then there's something you need to consider as far as getting a better results out of litter results and semen samples so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can keep the keep a couple of them on the couch chilling but like you yeah, said yeah. the ones that's really pushing for stud service need to be active oh yeah yep Definitely that's good. That's, that's so good. so what are what are some of the things that you guys do I mean, you guys are in the in the game. What are, what are some what's some advice that you would give? I know Roger, you're in the game. I mean, Carl, you're in the game. Everybody's in the game here. What would be some advice you would have for some of these listeners? Man, oh, I, just, man. I just whisper in my dog's ear and put that glove on, bro. He gets to hopping around. <laughs> are we talking nah. about exercise or collecting dogs? I thought just we were talking collecting about dogs. Like, what would you do as far as like if you want a high percentage of ink, uh, if you want to increase your opportunity to have a successful breeding? You know, oh. like what, what's some advice on that? Go ahead, Roger. Well, you want like like to get the best collection out of your mail? Is that what we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, best collection at like, the moment. Like give the this, blueprint. The this moment. <laughs> I'm, I'm calling. I'm calling you. I want to use one of your studs. Well, having a number, you want to use one of my stud? No. What I'm saying, at, if you're talking about collections, then obviously yes. having a bitch in heat yeah. in yep. front of that stud, yeah, it drastically increases. Always. Be best. Always. Now, after a stud gets collected so many times, he kind of gets used to, especially if the sleeve or the glove comes out, he gets excited. Yeah. He, you know, he'll still do just fine. But having a bitch in heat in front of him will always produce more. Always does better. Okay, let's just say you don't have that. What's the next best step? I know this is what we, they used to do at the veterinarian clinics is they would always like, okay, so there's one veterinarian clinic over here called Saxe Veterinarian Clinic. They have this bitch, right, who gives off the pheromones of that she's in heat, but she's not in heat. And so they always bring her out. So it totally makes sense what you're saying. Right. But back in the day, they would just like wipe a bitch who was in heat and they would keep the pad inside of like a Ziploc right. bag. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Would yeah. that be like a second best scenario or? Yeah, probably. I tell you, another thing is that uh, my studs always collect better at home. Mm. Yeah, so even if, even if I'm yes. meeting a client at the veterinary's office and they're like, hey, we're going to meet at the vet, vet's office and they're going to do an AI or whatever, I will still collect my stud at home because he always collects better at home. I'll take the stud that, with I, me I, I and let him see him. Way. No, you're, you're absolutely right. I had to learn that the hard way because I kept driving, right? Well, Bravado loves the fucking car ride. He's like, oh, shit, we're going for a car ride. <sighs> I'm fucking excited. Yeah. He gets overheated, you know, because he's just so excited to go to the dog park. Um, that, that dopamine drop. And sure, he, like he's he's still fertile, right? Like and he, his semen count is, is solid, but it's not as solid as it could be if I would have pulled as I pulled him at home. You know what I mean? Not only that, but they get nervous. If you get him to a vet's office, you're going to bring your stud into a vet's office that they're not normally at. 
And then some woman he don't even know is grabbing hold of his dick. I mean, it's it's a weird situation for him. He doesn't want to perform. You know what I mean? Yeah. Keep him at home. Dina has the the golden glove. You know what I mean? She always okay. takes care of it. So, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> the golden I, I, glove. We call Dina <laughs> Morgan of the industry. She has the yes, glove. sir. Yeah, she gets it done. <laughs> I'm the processing. You know, the spin down, and extend, and all that. But ninety nine percent of the time, she's she's the one that does the collections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we were to guess, and you're talking someone like in the industry, like let's say Khan or or Sam, how many collections do you feel they've ever had? If you were to guess a number, what would you, what would you guess a number? In the upper uh, thousands? No clue. Uh, callous, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Khan saying has to be callous, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> it's probably got carpal tunnel in his wrist. Oh, he shake his hand. Hey, that's a compliment. Feels like you got work oh, gloves on and you shake your hand. When I did the breeding to Grim uh, two years ago, Sam brought in Grim to the to the waiting room, right? And I expected him to hand it over to Charlie, his his uh, repro uh, specialist over at the vet. And uh, Sam handed him the bag with the collection tube, <laughs> held on to Grim, and his hand was going for a ride. Like I'm like, wow. <laughs> 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 like, just hold it there, Dad. I yeah. got you. But uh, I mean, me myself, it's funny, and people are probably gonna laugh. Um, but I don't care because it's helped me a lot, and everybody that I told about it that's helped them a lot is uh, play with your dog's dick, young, because then you don't need a teaser. You yeah, know? Um, he knows how it I works. Learned. Yeah, that's what I learned a long time ago. So that's like, a golden. Oh, hey, that's a nugget right there. Yeah, that's I, like, cause. Pilo, um, him being one of my first studs, I was having all the, you know, stud problems. He was shy at the vet, shy here at home, ran away from me. Um, so I wish that, you know, back when he was a pup, I had done that because Baby Yoda, I could pull out the glove and he's already shooting his shot. Yeah. yeah. Like, I got, with Baby Yoda, I got to get the bag on quick with him. Pilo yeah, now. Hold up, hold up. Yeah. <laughs> Pilo now and Earl and Hunter, when, uh, now, when they see the glove in the bag, they know what time it is. Right. Um, but yeah, it's uh, that'd be my 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 main advice to anybody new getting into it. Like, as soon as uh, they get to three four months, while you're watching TV, start playing with that shit because it'll help you out in the long run. I guarantee it. You're gonna get somebody in trouble. Hey, so um, <laughs> we got a ton of questions in here, guys. Um, some of them are in the question box, some are not. Um, go ahead, Zach Rogers. Yeah. Look at some of these questions on, on that are not in the box. I'm going to put some people in the uh, who are in the box in there, and then we'll start asking those. But there's some really good questions that are not in the box right now. Uh, all right, Service Dog Paul says, "How often do you work out your dogs aside from daily playing, daily play and training sessions, dedicated workout, weighted vest, jumping, running, pulling, etc." I know it's a great thing about the. Oh, that's about the vest. I thought they were just asking about the how we were talking about the semen collections and keeping them active. But anyway, we'll just how long? I mean, how much do you work your dogs? When, do you know? You should Roger? literally work your dogs out thirty minutes to an hour a day yes. if you have the opportunity. All yeah. my dogs, especially the the active show goers, they get an hour, uh, well, two hours, one hour in the morning, one hour at night, um, with the uh, X dog vest. Uh, the ones that are able to work the treadmill, Pilo, for instance, he loves the treadmill. He'll spend an hour on the treadmill while the other um studs that are active show and active studs they'll get walked around for about an hour so yeah um now where yeah, you're at funny. where you're at like how big is your your land available like i don't know if we don't i don't know you're in the suburbs or uh, do you have a little so bit now, of land no right now we uh we're pretty much in the suburbs so okay. we got neighbors but we pretty much there's a, a park enclosed park that we go to that pretty much no one goes to we'll let them run around there um hunter he loves the parachute um earl he uh he'll wear the vest and walk around and we'll run him too um pilo like i said he's on the treadmill and he loves right. the treadmill with the vest yeah. um i guess my so, point of that was like do you feel like do you feel like the suburban backyard is enough exercise no, for them no. No, okay. no, no, not at all. Um, well, that's the beauty about the X-Dog vest there, you know, like if you have a small yeah. yard and stuff like that. But 
for example, that's a great question, Roger. If you if you're someone who has dogs and you got a lot of land and they're able to move around a lot more compared to uh, a dog in the house, you know, in an right. apartment, like it's I don't know. Like I've always known, you take that same dog, you let him an outdoor dog. The same dog, if he lives an outdoor life versus a dog who lives an indoor life, they just their body type is completely different. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just different, man. You know. Yeah. Yeah, you can always tell when you see a dog, like Pilo, for instance. You see that dog, you know this dog's been exercised. You know, yeah. I mean, you know he's he's active. So it's we, just we, the muscle we, tone structure. We, we our backyard is fairly big. It's big enough for all our dogs to run around when they're out there. But I also got mm. like spring poles out there. I got nice. two spring pole setups out yeah. there, and uh, I mean it's big enough to throw the ball around and get them running around too. Right. So, uh, so it's a good. Right. Good yeah. example of like, you know, if you live in the suburbs and you want to have a nice dog, obviously you can. You know, it doesn't yeah, take you can four hundred acres to have a good yeah. nice bully. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh hood affiliated bullies. Brittany says, What's your best advice for helping anxiety inside the show ring? Helping Ooh. anxiety inside the show ring. Um again with that, start them off young. You gotta get them used to the environment. Um even as a puppy, socializing will help with that, with that anxiety. Yeah. Um, just keep them, keep them socialized and keep them around dogs. What age typically do you start showing them? Um, I'll get them wet at six months, see what they can do. Um, if I have okay. something that I feel can compete at that age, like, I mean, you yourself, you know, you have the youngest ABKC grand champion. Um, and she was, you know, from the time she stepped in the ring, it was meant to be. Right. Yeah. Um, do but, you guys, not to interrupt you, but do you guys set up mock mock environments? You know what I mean? Like you, even like you don't get them in the show that early. But for example, Hannah, she's constantly going to oh, these training sessions yeah, really early prior to that. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. I'll, I'll bring them out front because our street's wide enough where I can make the circle, I can make the down and back. Um, so they they get the practice. They do get okay. the practice. And Believe I mean, it or not, that's good. We get the neighbors come out, so that's. That's association right there, you know, socialization with all them. So, I was going to say, and believe it or not, working out on the street out there is actually good because another another issue dogs have when they're young is just being distracted. Mm -hmm. you know, well, people that. standing, people standing outside the ring, <clears throat> dogs barking. Yep. If you can get a dog accustomed to cars going by and neighbor yep. running his lawnmower and him still holding his stack and behaving himself, that gives well, you a lot better chance in the ring. You're right because. Um, well, we, I experienced something a few years ago. It's probably like three or four years ago where um, we were expecting this, this doc dog, right? Um, this doc dog set the, the world record or some national record, right? And um, it was outdoors. And the nationals was indoors. And it significantly underperformed. Yeah. yeah. Just because the environment w wasn't the same, you know, oh, yeah. trained outdoors, yeah, yeah. constantly outdoors, nationals indoors, and it's jumping a foot and a half, two inch, mm -hmm. two foot mm -hmm. shorter. Just yep. because of all the echo effects and just it wasn't the same. Yeah. All right, Bama Wave Bully says, "What's the best numbers to breed a female?" Uh, uh, depends on the uh, the scale you're using. I mean, IDEX ovulation is between what four and a half to six. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. General rule of thumb: forty eight hours later, you're doing your first AI. Mm. Four days later, you're probably doing a surgical. You know. Um, it just depends on the scale. But a lot of people go off IDEX. So yeah. 48 hours after ovulation, you're breeding. Yeah. And some females come up fast. Some come up slow. Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. It never hurts to do another yeah. uh, do another test right before you breed them just to see right. where they're at. Just to make Here, sure. Yep. Here's a question I want to respond to, and I'll let you guys respond to it as well. Is this Dominic underscore spot woods 95. What's your opinion on oxy stud? I want to take a deeper dive into that. Like supplements are, are one thing, right? But for example, there's a big movement on blueberries, right? Blueberries are fucking great, right? They're loaded with antioxidants. They're just, they're just an amazing fucking superfood. Yeah. But if your foundational feeding program is shit, and you're, let's say, for example, you're feeding Old Roy or Kibbles and Bitch, some really fucking low-grade, bottom-to-grade, AFCO standard type dog food, and you're causing all this inflammation, throwing a few blueberries or a handful of blueberries are not going to do nothing for you, right? Yeah. Like, because it's just a counter-reaction you're trying to balance. So it doesn't matter what supplement you're using. I would say, for example, my opinion on OxyStud, 
that's the second you shouldn't have to supplement oxystud unless your fucking foundational feeding program is absolutely ass now if you want the most out of that supplement make sure your foundational feeding program is optimized then add blueberries or oxystud or any other type of you know supplement into it because if not if that shit don't work, if oxystead doesn't work and your dog's not fertile, you're going to blame it on oxystead. You're not going to blame it on the, the, the foundational yeah, feeling yeah, of, yeah. of, your, of your shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can get but it. But I'll let you guys go ahead. Have you guys had experience with it? Uh, I've never used it just because I give uh, straight fish oil. So Yeah. yeah. Um, and a multivitamin. So yeah, that keeps them pretty in line. Yeah, that healthy fat, man, I'm telling you, it's so underrated. Yeah. And anybody that's got a young stud, you have to understand the first couple of times you collect your mail, it's going to be garbage. Like, mm -hmm. don't get dis don't get disappointed, you know, the first few times you collect him. Like, it takes them a little while to get the, the pipes all filled up. Yep. Yeah. Beat the Odds Kennel says, what's your advice for a camp fixing to have their first litter ever? <laughs> 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 Stay at six different. Save up vacation. Um, <laughs> there's uh, so many things. There's so many things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, in your first litter, how, how did that go? Like, how did you, the first time you ever had a litter? Um, my first time I had a litter, it was a litter of 11. Um, Challenge number one. Yeah. I was pretty much ready for everything just because I did the research. I built the welcome box and everything, had the heat map set up. Um, the only thing I wasn't prepared for was the lack of sleep. Yeah. That's, that's like the number one thing, setting your alarm and just fighting. You know, I got to wake up. I got to yeah, make yeah. sure those puppies are, are fed, you know. Um, <clears throat> I think you have to mentally prepare for that. So, yeah, that yeah. my advice would be mentally prepare for the sleep you're going to lose. And I see right. people out here doing – Back to back breedings. I'm like, man, you guys are yeah. crazy. How the hell do you do it? Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> and you know, people have asked me before, like, why do you why do you stay up all night with them? You know, those dogs will be fine. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. this isn't like your neighbor's, you know, shepherd or whatever. Like yeah. These these puppies are that important that we're gonna stay up and we're gonna get up every two hours and make sure yeah. these because they're that important yep. good mom take care of them potentially yeah new moms tend to be a little clumsy oh, yep. but accidents you know, happen yeah but yeah. experienced moms you know could potentially take care of the puppies yeah. but, but the dogs are the so kids? vital you know that we watch over them yeah why 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 even risk it if your percentage is always higher always go higher you know yeah. like yeah exactly. do whatever you got to do now yeah. carl do you use like an incubator or anything like that with new litters or with new litters, um, I do use an incubator, but I only used it once. Um, other okay. than that, I've had good success without using one. Just because the room that we typically keep them in, um, I keep it at a certain temperature. Right. Um, so that in its own. And literally, the door's closed 24-7. I have a cot set up in there, so and my TV usually is in there. I'll have my phone, and that's it. No one comes in right. unless I know, and I'll make, you know... I'll prepare for that little draft that does come in. And I think that's oh, definitely yeah. important is like yeah. equipped your whelping room. That way you don't have to get up and leave. Yeah. Like yep. make yeah. make sure you got all the stuff, the phone charger, the TV, the whatever yep. it is that you exactly. need. That way you can stay there and help mom. Yep. Yep. Mm -mm -mm. Scroll through these questions. Let's see, guys. What's your ideal stats on a stud? Head size? What does it say? TTW weight and what gives you the wow factor, technically speaking? Fresh bullies, <laughs> New York. <laughs> <laughs> um, See, so like, I think everybody looks for that. Give me that secret recipe, that one all yeah. that's going to solve our problems. But that's right. the whole <laughs> chase, right? Like, everybody's vision is different. My wow factor is different than Carl's wow factor or Roger's wow factor, or Zach's wow factor. You know, it, I, and then I seen somebody make a post the other day and they said, it was a long post. I can't remember who made it, but they were basically saying how, yeah, we all push for that dog, but certain like the, the big dogs that we know, the ones that are like, Oh shit, that's him. They were like, bro, that shit only comes one to a litter. There's never two to a litter. It's here, there and there. Like, 
those are the dogs we're hunting for, but not every dog is that dog. Well, yeah. Zach, like, I mean, there's a reason why there's other communities, right? When you think about it, like, somebody's might think some exotic is their wow factor and yeah. despises right. an ABKC national champion. Yeah. Right. You know for what I mean? Like, and so, well, you, that, so speaking of the exotic world, there's a post floating around. They just had a show and a pit bull. They allowed a pit bull to come and register and show in the ring. And he took best in show in the regular show and in the fun show. And the exotic community is like going eight. That's, that's the one that uh, June Williams judged, right? Yeah, that show. Yeah, like they're like going I've, crazy over this, bro. I've seen a post with that. They're I mad. Upset? They're mad. Yeah, they're mad yeah. because the pit bull yeah. came in the ring and June said, listen, man. I respect what he said because, you know, it's an exotic community, but he's like, there's a difference between a stack off and being in the show ring. If a mm -hmm. dog's in the show ring, for one, it should be able to walk with a lead. Two, it yeah. should be able to function and it should be able to perform. And he was like, y'all, I'm a judge. Y'all allowed the dog to sign up and register. Yeah. I did my job. And he was like, yeah. my my choice was the pit bull because he yeah. performed the best. And like, dude, the exotic community is like, no, nah, bro, this ain't right. <laughs> Well, it kind of answers right. the question, like, uh, what's what's the specs on Pilo? Uh, he has a 25-and-a-half-inch head. He's at 15.75 at the Withers, and he's I keep him at 85 pounds because okay. that's where he performs the best in the ring. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was completely impressed with him the first time I saw him. Yeah, I, I thought uh, he was a very nice dog. Would Thanks. you say that that's – that's pretty average across the board, those specs right there. I would say that that's kind of. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would say that. Like, not saying your average. dog's average, but, like, most, you know, like, we've only got to a certain height, like, yeah. you know what I mean, a certain size. Like, nobody's yeah. come out with a 32-inch head no, yet, you know what I'm saying? I, I believe so, that that's pretty average across the board, you know, plus or minus, obviously. Right. But, yeah. yeah, that's pretty average. Let me ask you something, Carl. Um, how far do you feel that your camp is away from – producing a top dog and becoming an APKC national champion? Oh, uh, with what we got going on now, um, I would say probably within the next, truthfully, two to three years. Because I'm yeah. shooting for it. And I know Corey, um, we've joined up in some breedings. Um, and he's produced some phenomenal bulls using Earl. And then now we just did a breeding with Pilo because he's looking to get that angulation that Pilo has and add more bone, too. Um, so I would say within the next two to three years. Two okay. Three years. Yeah. And that would be within the – because uh, you're talking pocket class right now, right? Yeah. Are you looking class. for – Yeah, actually, so I'm, I'm, shooting, I'm shooting to bring it up a little bit, come up to okay. the standard um, class, because that seems to be what's dominating. But really? we will have – pocket dogs that I will be campaigning um, shooting for that that title. Yeah. I always say like the standard is the short standard. So I should yeah. say just a dog above, right above the line. Yeah. It's kind of my favorite dog. But then I'll go home and I'll see dogs like a little bit and I'm like yeah I like them too. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but to bring to the show deal. ring for yeah. sure would be the short standard. Yeah. Exactly. For sure. Alright so so I'm trying to scroll through more of these questions, man. Here's one. What do you think is the current problem in the ABKC community, and what would you do to fix it? Yeah. That's um, a deep one. I'll let you guys take on this. I'm going to go ahead and spin the wheel while you guys take a deep dive into this because that is an in-depth question. Yeah, that's that's a tough one, actually. Uh I mean, we have to be self-honest and we got to talk about what can we improve anything that that falls in personal life and everything, you know, being self-honest is one of the toughest questions and the things that we got to look in the mirror and go, Hey, these are things I got to work on. Right. Um, but if we're going to improve the community, these are conversations that need to be spoken about, you know? Um, I think, uh, the judges. Hey, listen, and, and I know you guys both, I know a lot of you guys both all y'all show, so I'm not saying, like, I know there's a lot of politics in here, so you don't have to, like, get into that deep a dive, you know what I mean? But, you know, let's let's try to, like, reflect and be a little bit honest. Um, sure. con continued training yeah. amongst the judges right. is what okay. I would like to see. Okay. Like I said, be a little bit honest, like we're a bunch of liars all the yeah. time. <laughs> well, I just, I don't want to... <laughs> 
here, I don't, I know, like, there's a lot of politics in all, and this isn't just in the bully community, but it goes right. amongst the AKC community, UKC, ADBA, yeah. you right. know, and I'm not trying to, like, you know, jeopardize anybody's, um, yeah. there's a lot of egos when it comes to yeah. dogs. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, uh, yeah, continued training and, uh, Yeah, that's that, that's all I'm gonna say. Is continue training. <laughs> and um, Roger goes war uh, training. <laughs> uh, and that goes probably training. <laughs> yeah. 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 Accountability. Yeah. There you go. Accountability. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Man. Well, I mean, with any judge, yeah, they they breed they judge within the standard. But yeah. there's still that that layer of opinion, you yes. know. That yeah. and that's really what creates the different judging styles is yeah. because they have pet peeves, they have you know opinions on what they like, you know. And you can't you can't force that out of a person. And then, like I they're mean, gonna have an opinion. The yeah. thing is that the list of flaws. It's not like we're just looking for three flaws. No. There's a list of flaws. So each judge, like you said, is going to take certain flaws that they see that's more than the other in their mind and be like, okay, if I see that, that's higher on the list of pushing it out the way. Then, of course, the next judge is like, well, that doesn't bother me as much as this bothers me. Right. So, exactly. You know, and that's definitely the case. You know, definitely uh, the case. But just accountability on all, on all aspects, on all ratios from everybody. From <clears throat> the show attenders to the breeders to the judges to the whole thing like i think we all just need to be a little more accountable and push forward for a better response of what we're looking for because it, we're all to blame it's not like we can just blame one spectrum of the circle like yeah at the end of the day everybody's got to be accountable and like i said from the top to the bottom so that's all i want to see more is just a little more accountability standing up for yeah a person yeah, going exactly. into the ring should know what they're what they're bringing into the ring because right. yeah. not many people, you know, a lot of people will just bring. Oh, I think this dog is good for the ring. Let's go. And next thing you know, they're they're yeah. making a complaint because yeah. my thing is is that if you're gonna step into the ring, bring the dog that's gonna be undeniable. Right. Um, and I, I live by that. I live by that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's see here. We're spinning. All right, next question. Tension over. <laughs> <laughs> Walking yeah, on hurry up through this needles. damn question. Uh, <laughs> uh, how can you get on the wheel? Everybody that, if you put a question in the question mark at the bottom of the screen down here in the question box, you should have been entered into the wheel to have yeah, a Yeah, it's not just add me. If you just say add me in the comments, it's not going to, like, we, we need bring some quality. Uh, let's see. Fresh XL Bully said he did that and he's not on the wheel. We'll get you on there. Uh, scroll. Well, if you just scroll, asked it, yeah, you're scroll. not going to be on the wheel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you just came in and asked the question, you put, yeah, <coughs> he added all them earlier. Let's see. Got that question. In y'all opinion, who's the top kennel bullies? Or who? What is it? Wait. In y'all's opinion, who's the top bullies kennel? So who's number one right now, guys? Well, who's on top of the game? Well, right now we got a, I mean, it's it's some legends and it's and, and zero, yeah. right? Like right now, if we're talking right. about ABKC, yeah, yeah. Uh, we talk, if we're talking about outside the uh, ABKC, as far as like who's hot and breeding, I mean, there's a handful of people yeah. out there that are really yeah. killing yeah, it right now. Right. I'll let you guys take over. It's hard to rank so, that because there's people you don't even know about that are successful, yeah. you know. Right. So yeah, the, uh, the community is so huge, but. Within ABKC, there's no doubt. Like zero is killing yeah, it right, yeah. right now. Yeah, it's when he steps right out, now. it's over with. And that you know that ties along with Sam. My my in my opinion, Sam's at the top right now because um, he's just producing, 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 producing. Right. Um, yeah. And zero's you know zero. I mean, 100 best of breeds set that record. Exactly. That's an accomplishment. That's, that's yeah, that's an insane. Yeah. That's and then uh, not even just on the dog man, just on their camp being able to pull that off and like people yeah. don't understand a hundred shows alone. Oh yeah. You know, I, All right, I mean, let me ask you guys a question. Crazy. Let's go. Let's just say this happens, right? It's let's fine. just say we get to the nationals, right? Zeros in the ring, just has a bad day, doesn't win the national championship. 
Um, how shocking <coughs> would that be? Hey man, I ain't gonna talk about this. Put no bad juju on nobody. No, I'm just saying, like, how shocking would that be? Dude, can like, you mute? No, Stan? because this needs to be talked about. It can like, happen. Hey. <laughs> Stand on it today, hoping. guys. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, it happens, man. And I think it would probably be the most shocking thing in ABKC history. Like, um, man, I mean, obviously look. he would have to have an, a massively off, off day. But yeah. then it's like, why should everybody else show up? based on what he's doing right now no because at the end of the day nationals is like you you don't see the dogs you see at nationals at everyday shows uh, like yeah, like absolutely. when i went to nationals last year bro there was dogs that you hear about that you know about that you haven't seen that come back out and then there's dogs that you're like bro where did this dog come from yeah. who is this you know what i'm saying yeah. so i a life lesson i just taught my daughter for homecoming man that the little girl that was out there she thought she won and she was like big and everybody she's oh yeah i got it i got it I, I'm, I'm homecoming queen all this and then we went out on the field and they announced it and it wasn't a little girl they picked somebody else that won and like this little girl was devastated and i like broke it down to my daughter i was like look in competition like this you can't just come out here and be like hey i got it because yeah. like you said <clears throat> anything can happen at the end of the day no that's but, that's what i wanted to know but as far as zero is concerned i mean he's a robot yeah. if you've seen yeah. him in the ring yeah, I mean, Hannah's done such a good job with him. It's it's incredible he's, just to watch that dog move around the ring. Yeah, he's a, if, he's on if point. he shows up, he's a definitely – it's a different ball game when he shows up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I know they're going to do anything and anything to make sure nothing happens. So, But as awesome. far as – as far as outside of zero and the dogs that people do know, who do you think is going to be a contender this year at Nationals? Ooh. I mean, everybody loves Zero, but there's still dogs out there that's like, okay, well, he you might remember, be like a contender. Last year they were talking about dogs coming in internationally that was supposed to, you know, create yeah. shock, yeah. and you know, like. I mean, and has there ever the been day? a dog that didn't like show, or I guess they just earned the minimal amount of points to qualify for nationals? You know, come in and just shock the game. Shock you the know, I mean, yeah. You you don't know, I mean you could show a regular old dog in nationals in the regular class. You don't have to be champ or grand champ. Uh, but they bring them from all over the place, man. Uh, I think last year they had two dogs from, like, London or the – Yeah, was say, somewhere. it definitely was one from Europe. I yeah, there was one from Europe. And I think the other one came from, like, Australia or something like that. Or yeah, was yeah. it South America? I yeah, I, I think it was South, South America. America. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. I think it's uh, it's just hard for people to get to the States. I think more dogs would come. It's just a harder process for them to travel with their dog over here. Yeah. But yeah, Nationals is dope, bro, because it's like I said, man, you're going to see dogs that you didn't know existed, and you're going to see dogs that you haven't seen, and then you'll see the heavy hitters that's been putting in work all. And mm -hmm. that's the thing, like, I mean, when you got a situation like Zero that's been putting in all this work, is it fucked up when he comes out and loses to a dog that didn't put in no fucking work all year, and they're just like, hey, we're going to take him today. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's a lot that you got to look at, but that dude... Like Roger said, for one, it comes down to handling, too. Like who? Is, so it's hard to fucking perform up against Hannah because she's gonna be at the top of her game, like you said, bro. She makes that dog do shit that you're like, damn. How are they doing that? It's all the components are there. Yeah, yeah. everything's in line. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right, so we're doing a last call, Zach, Roger, Carl. We're doing a last call. If you guys didn't ask a question, you got an opportunity to ask a question in the box. I'm gonna add you to the wheel. Um, if I'd already liked your question, that means you've been added. Um, but it has to be a question. You can't just say add me. So what are we giving away? Uh, another couple more minutes to ask some questions, and then um, we'll spin the wheel a couple more times. What are we so giving what, away? What kind of breedings you got coming up? Uh, sir? My Rocco two times inbred Shamrock daughter, uh, Sasha G. Okay. Um, she's going to be coming back in the heat soon, and we're going to bring her to zero. Okay. Um, it's been a breeding that I've been waiting for, and I know uh, – Hannah and Sam and James have been waiting for it um, right. ever since I brought it to their attention. Um, but that's Hannah and, and uh, Jim, they're going to be helping me make my picks as far as what's going to be my next up and coming show dog. Um, nice. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one. Yeah, I know what um, that means. 
they're gonna have a they searching for big booty holes. They having a whole well, no, party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Show me. I mean, the you definitely gotta look yeah. for the, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Is that what day y'all want to check these buttholes out, man? <laughs> is that dominant in the show ring? I don't know. No, it's so busy watching them <laughs> move around the ring. I don't have time to look at their ass. Uh, I don't no, know. Just speak for yourself. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of crazy when you talk about Zero. Like he came out of such a large litter, you know. Like where, where's all his litter mates? Is you guys know? Are you guys familiar with all any of his litter mates? Yeah, uh, yeah. I have yeah. one. Oh, you do? Yeah. Told you he'd be. He'd but be how many? How many? How many was out of that litter? There was like a massive amount, like 12, 13 I think it was eleven. Eleven. Yeah, I think they said like yeah. eleven or twelve. Yeah. I was yeah. Four, uh, three. I have mesmerized me. Yeah. Then, oh, that's uh, it. Al, that's Al, it. Al Mayo has uh, Zero's brother. I forgot his name. He's a real. He's a real Sorry, nice boy too. Is it with a T? Something with. Is a it with a T? I, uh, I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up. Can't remember that name, but he is a nice dog yeah, for sure. He's a nice dog. Um, yeah. And then so is he. But yeah, there's. Believe it or not, it there's still. Like, as big as that litter was, there were some very nice dogs that yeah. came from that litter. Um, and I think, yeah, if Mimi, in, in my opinion, if uh, if I would have had the opportunity to promote her, she'd went far, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I didn't get her until she was an adult, but um, she's an amazing dog. BMF Bully Mafia family said, if y'all could bring one dog back from the past, who would it be? Ooh. That's a deep question right there. Yeah. Me personally, I, I don't. I don't really look that far back to the past. I'm always yeah, kind of looking yeah. forward. Yeah. This current generation, next generation. I have. I ain't really. You know. I don't really consider myself a breeder. I'm more of an enthusiast. So, and I don't. I ain't been around long enough to be like, oh, I bring this dog because I was. I wasn't around, so I don't know. You know what I'm saying? For me, it'd be. Uh, it'd probably be Cairo because I wonder if Cairo was around. How much he would have influenced the game? Yeah, I got a bitch that has got him in the pads, but that's far few and in between that you do. That's just off like, per like I just yeah, I just, right. That's like saying yeah, I can boy, appreciate boy, those short shot. Like yeah, you got to. Yeah, you got to. It's I just, all I just part wonder of like what one or two dogs and individuals could have just dramatically influenced the because it really doesn't. It takes. I mean, you know, it takes multiple dogs, but sometimes it just takes that one dog to change the entire landscape of how people look at the game. I mean, when you talk about someone like that, you know? Right. All right, I'm going to pull a couple more. Um, I'll let you guys ask the final questions, and then um, we're going to pick two more winners and then call it a night. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see. I'm not ventured into the question mark box yet, but handle that. If people may not know, Carl, and people may not know that I recently bred the Pilo myself. Yes, yes you did. To yeah, beautiful, with, uh, beautiful female over there. Yeah, Nomi Malone. So yeah. she's, uh, I think it's, that's a good breeding. That's a good matchup. When I saw her in person, when I stopped by to visit, and saw her in person. Yeah, she's a she's a hell of a female. I'm really bad with pictures, so I'll post a picture. Of, I mean, that picture that I posted, Nomi, is probably. I think she was just a year old. Yeah. So now you're seeing her at two, and you're like, "Holy yeah. crap!" Like yeah. she's way bigger yeah. than. So well, I definitely need to get some updated photos of her. Carl's a partner in, in the game. You know, I told you last week how important pictures are, Roger. And where's the mute button? <laughs> what happened to the mute? <laughs> 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 I just took some of Mac. It's tough, you know what I mean? I'm trying to schedule yeah. everything, but yeah. It is a job, for sure. It is. It's one people of those like don't understand, like, you'll take 300 photos to get that one. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. It, yeah, it still doesn't do the dog justice because when you no. see the dog in person, you're like, holy fuck. Yeah. I think, I, went, yeah. I think at last we took Mac out. Um, I think I took like 40 some photos. And I just got three that I liked. <laughs> yeah. So that's my amateur problem. Now, if I had Jim here, that's completely a different story. Yeah. You know, Jim, he'll, he'll just pull up his camera, like, click, click. Yeah, I got yeah. one. And I'm like, okay. And then he sends yeah. me, like, awesome. He's got that photographer eye, bro. Like, I've yeah, watched him sure. at a show. I, 
I've watched him at a show like literally nobody's paying attention to him and he's like off in the corner behind the pole like moving chairs and shit and then like boom 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 and then I end up seeing him post a picture on Facebook I'm like bro <laughs> what? Crazy, right? like yeah. what? Yeah, you'll be bro, in this conversation with him and he'll just step snap 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 and then man, back anybody, to the conversation with right you. back to the conversation <laughs> Anybody that walks around with a camera with a sweatband on there, some bitch, is cold as hell, bro. <laughs> like, he got the sweatband for ultimate grief. I was like, bro, yeah. I've never seen, never, nobody ever rocking the sweatband like that. He's like, man, it comes in handy, bro. Now, do you do any of your own photography, Carl? Do you try to I, go out and snap some yeah, shots? I do. Yeah. Um, when I have the time, I'll, I'll bust my camera out and take some shots. Right. Yeah. But I think we're all probably guilty of not doing enough. Like, we should Here's, do more. Yeah. Now. Yeah, and I see. Like, I think everybody, as far as anybody that's trying to promote their yard, should have a camera of quality to take photos. But when you come yeah. across people like fucking uh, uh, James and all the other ph photographers, like oh, you got to get that work. Yeah, but take that's like, it. yeah, exactly. But for everyday stuff, I think it's something that everybody should invest in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jim can take a a phone uh, photo with his cell phone. And it looks better, and I can yeah. do it with a D five hundred. So, <laughs> yeah, right. and then maybe you this get out there and is. try to take pictures. You'll you'll understand and have a little more respect when you see the cameraman and be like, okay, I see why it's worth that now. Right, because it's a lot, bro. I thought the same thing. I was like, man, I'm gonna go out here. This is man, this shit easy. What? It's a dog, man. Come on, man. It can't be hard. <laughs> Angles, timing. Yeah, well, all kinds of shit goes in. I mean, a snapshot's one thing. You know, it can take you up can to three take a snapshot. Feet. Looks fine. But to get that photo with, like, you know, the focus just right and the lighting. And oh, it yeah. Takes, takes like Stan said, three people for sure. You need one person handling the dog, cameraman, and then somebody running around like a weirdo. Talking about some yeah. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Making some kind of noise. Yeah, making some kind of yeah. noise, bro. You go yeah. to the park and other people are looking like, uh -huh. what, what in the hell? Is, there, I don't yeah. know. What? <laughs> And it's a little, like you said, Roger, it's like a timing thing because it's mm -hmm. like, I'll have to, like, I know bro. what gets, gets, yeah. you know, bravado going. So I'm like, okay, hold on to the jolly ball in the car. Don't let him see the shit. Now I need you to go over to the hill and he's getting the camera ready. And right. then when I wave my hand, I need you to bring the jolly ball. Just hold it up in the air. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck is it? Okay. Boom. That's why I got the shot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was funny. Cause we just went to the park recently with Machiavelli. We get there, we pull in. And I'm kind of out trying to scope spots out. And I walk over the hill, and there's a photographer there taking photos of their family, like taking, you know, family photos. So here I am. I got this, you know, giant bull up on top of a rock trying to take a picture of him. And right below me, like, this family and their little kids. And we're all trying to maneuver around each other so we're not, like, getting in each other's shot or whatever. It's not the biggest park, so there was just that. <laughs> um, a couple spots I could be in, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a job, bro. So, what's the questions? Any more? Any other questions we want to get to? Nah. Um, let's mm -hmm. uh, close this one out, man. Carl, all first right. of all, man, I want to say thank you. Um, hey. I want to say appreciate everything you're doing for our community, man. You're a leader by example. Um, you definitely inspire me. Um, I was, man, really excited about bringing you on just because I always see you at shows and we never really had a really good opportunity to really yeah. chat and talk. Um, and uh, I just say, man, like, uh, keep killing it, bro. <laughs> Like I, I believe that you you do have an opportunity in the next two or three years to um, produce a top dog and, an, and, a, and a dog that can qualify um, that has a, a really good strong shot of winning the national championship because you just have that desire you have the vision and you have the stock and um, and the ambition so I just want to say thank you man it's an honor to have you on this show and man we definitely want to bring you on again sometime in the near future oh yeah most definitely thank you for guys thank you guys for having me on it was a, definitely a pleasure and an honor yes sir yes sir man we appreciate it bro. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and we'll catch you on the next episode, bro. Peace. All right, brother. See you. I'll let you. All right. See you guys.